All right, well, I'm just going to say it. We tend to live our lives selfishly. That's just how it is. We do. Even though the scripture tells us, like in Proverbs chapter 3, it tells us to, to honor the Lord with our possessions, to live our lives for God. We have such a difficult time with that. We spend more of our time living just for ourselves. Now, there is a story in the Gospel of Matthew, and this is what I want to look at, of a woman. Actually, it's Mary, uh, the sister of Martha and sister of Lazarus, right? We, we know that from John's Gospel, but we know that um, in this account, she takes some very expensive spices, okay, that were traditionally used in preparing people after they passed away. And they were very expensive. And she took those and she poured them onto the Lord. Okay. And then, you know, uh, basically Judas Iscariot gets upset because he's the dude that's carrying the money. And he said, Hey, we could have, we could have sold that, that, that could, we could have made a fortune with that man, that, man i'm sorry i don't know where that voice came from anyways come on man so uh he gets upset and he says you know basically claiming that they could have helped out the poor with it now there's a lot of a lot of interesting things happen next jesus says hey you're always going to have the poor with you and that's a sad reality, but it's true. In this world, there is, there's always going to be things that we need to engage in, things that are broken in this world. That's absolutely true. And the Lord says, but you won't always have me. Okay. And then he says this, which is another interesting thing. He says, wherever the gospel is preached in the world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. That's really fascinating. And uh, for one reason is because this is really one of the few times you ever hear Jesus say something quite like this in this context, right? But the real fascinating thing about this is that we know that all of every account, every story that we see in the scripture, but particularly in the gospels, every every account that we read in the gospels were included there because they were very, very significant. And the reason I say very, very significant is because John said at the end of his gospel, hey, if you recorded everything that Jesus did, there's not enough books on the earth to write it all down. So of these events that took place, the most significant ones that happened were recorded. There were definitely all kinds of other things that took place in the over the life of Jesus, over the time he spent with his disciples. Undoubtedly, there were a lot. And a lot of those things weren't recorded. But this was, and this is an important thing. And I, there's actually a lot to learn here, but there's one thing that really stands out to me that I've been considering and thinking about over and over. And it's this, first of all, we know that our life, our breath, everything we have, actually, we can look at it and we could say in one way or another, it was something that God gave us. OK, even if you said, no, Dale, I'm a self-made man, you know, I've I've worked hard every. Yes, that's true. But who gave you the ability to work hard? People that work hard, they there are people this happens all the time. They work hard. They're self-sufficient. They're doing everything that they that they've ever wanted and dreamed. And then something changes all of a sudden their health shifts and they can no longer work. That happens to people. Who gives you the ability to do that strength? Well, the Lord gives you that ability. The Lord 
gives you the ability to carry on day by day. The Lord gives you your very next breath, according to the scripture. So Mary had been given life. She had been given, you know, over the course of her life. We don't know how she came by these fragrances. But again, if we look at it, we can say, you know what? The, the Lord has provided everything we have. So why is it a big deal? What does it, why would the Lord make an, such, such a big deal about this? I think for one, because she was one of the few people at the time that actually understood what was happening. Because if you look at when the Lord's talking to his disciples about what's about to happen with him being betrayed and everything, they didn't get it. And they, he told them, hey, figure it out. They, just, they didn't get it. They didn't pay attention or something. I don't know. But the other thing is what stands out to me about this that is, is just almost surprising, right? Is that from this passage, when you read it, it's very clear it actually blessed the Lord. Now, does the Lord need us to do these things? Did the Lord need Mary to come in here? Absolutely not. Does he need us in any way? No. It's not like he, she did something for him that he couldn't do for herself. It's not like that. It's there's it's nothing. It the Lord, if he's if he is God, he doesn't need us, right? However, because of who he is and because of his plan, he allows us to be a part of all of this. You know, it's a blessing. It's sometimes, you know, it's interesting being in ministry. Sometimes I feel my, like I, I'm trying to talk certain people into getting into ministry, right? Not like being full-time pastors, but hey, you need to pray about what to do, how to be involved and get plugged in. And sometimes that's met with resistance and, and for different reasons, right? I'm not going to get into all of that mess, but there's different reasons for that. But <clears throat> honestly, the only reason I would talk somebody into that is because I know that they don't realize what they're missing. They're missing the blessing of being a part of, uh, you know, what God is doing. It still is surprising. It's still shocking when um, we're doing whatever we're doing and lives are being changed. When, when we're teaching a Bible study or praying for people or whatever, and then somebody's life is changed, it's it's a, still a surprising thing. We never take that for granted. We never think, oh yeah, of course. You know, even though I mean, knowing how good God is, we should be able to say, of course, God intervened in this situation, you know. But what I'm saying is we don't take it for granted because it is, it's a blessing. It's special. It's not, it's not just like uh, joining a club. We're talking about um, participating in God's kingdom. And, you know, if you're like me, if you're like, if you're human, you know there's plenty of reasons from your past that God would say, no, you shouldn't be a part of this. But he lets us. Not only does he let us, and not only does he bring us in, not only does he bless us as we're, uh, as he's using us in different capabilities and different uh, facets of ministry and all of this stuff, but in that time when we take what he's given us and we honor him with it and we we use it to his glory just like this just like Mary right he he basically says oh this is going to be talked about forever i mean i'm talking about it and i actually felt compelled to talk about it because when i when i came across it i was like this is fascinating 
it will be a memorial. It's interesting. If you look, go, if you look through the book of Proverbs, okay, and I know this is going to be a little bit longer than normal, but listen, it's got to be said. Uh, if you look through the book of Proverbs, God says, basically, in multiple different ways, not only that the wicked will be dealt with, but he also says that their memory will be the memory of their life. The, the memory, the, he, he says he will basically remove them from the historical account. I mean, not exactly in that way, but he'll re remove the memory of these wicked people, but he'll hold up the righteous. God has a plan of doing that. These things are important to, to the Lord. And it blesses him to honor people. We see that all through the scripture. He even says, you know, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for the, the man that he can show himself strong on his behalf, right? It blesses God to um, actually use people and point them out when they walk by faith and when they serve and honor him and, and put them in places where they are noticed because they're honoring him because they're glorifying him. And honestly, I mean, I'm more of, of that mindset that says, you know what? I, I, I could do just background. I could be working in the background and, and hiding basically, you know, doing, doing what needs to get done behind closed doors. I'm cool with that. But that's not always God's plan. And that's not even, he doesn't always want us to just be hidden. So here I am. It's been 2,000 years. Here I'm reading about Mary. I'm reading about her life. And it's a reminder, man. God sees, God sees when we are living for him. He sees it. It blesses him. He wants to preserve that heritage. He wants to honor us. And even though we're totally unworthy of it, he does that because he is gracious and he's good in that way. So I hope that's something that gets you thinking. You know, when I was thinking about this and praying about this, I was just um, it's very encouraging. And sometimes when you're serving the Lord, some, especially these days with it being so dark and so much crazy stuff going on, sometimes it's hard to be encouraged. But think about this. We're not, we're not serving men. We're serving God. And that's an important note. We're not, even the Lord, when he came, he did the Father's will, right? We're serving the Lord. And as we do that, God... Um, he blesses us. He will reward us. The day will come. He will give us a reward. And all of this stuff is um, just, it's a huge blessing. So I hope that blesses you. I hope it gives you something to think about. I hope it encourages you in your walk with the Lord today. May the Lord richly bless you. I will see you again tomorrow. God bless.